she's a The Combat Cast, Episode 1, featuring Spencer, the Body Snatcher Brown. And we are live. Hello and welcome to uh, The Combat Cast. I'm joined here with a very special guest, Mr. Spencer Brown from Senchai Yokao Muay Thai Gym. Uh, Spencer, for those that do not know, is a uh, Muay Thai fighter from Scotland, living out here in Thailand. Uh, as I mentioned at Yokao Senchai Muay Thai Gym, he's a current ISK and European WBC, uh, what is it, super featherweight or super, super, super lightweight? lightweight? Super lightweight oh, champion, um, wanting to be the international world champion, world champion. yeah, at some point in time. Um, but yeah, so um, to get things started, Spencer, I would just like to ask you, um, how did you actually start in Muay Thai? Uh, I'd always wanted to box when I was younger, but my mum wouldn't let me. Okay. She'd always tell me that she didn't want to mess up my, my handsome face. Yeah. But she would let me go and play rugby against these massive big guys. But um, it wasn't until I was on the train to go to high school. I'd have to get two trains every, four trains every day, back and forth to, to high school. And uh, I was with some friends. And he, would, he had an apprenticeship up in Glasgow, and then I would split off to go to my school. He was telling me he was doing boxing, then Muay Thai for, um, for fitness, try and get fit and stuff like that. And what's Muay Thai? So he shows me some pictures, shows me some videos, and I was like, right. Came back the next day with my mum, begging her, like, my mate's going off, Quinn's going off, please let me, like, I'll, I'll tag along with him, just one class, and that'll, that'll be it, I just want to at least try it, you know. I'd, I'd always been in sports, I'd done gymnastics for six years, I was doing gymnastics at the time. Six years for six years before that, swimming before that, rugby at school and stuff like that, athletics, and then gym lifting. Um, so she thought, yeah, okay, no problem, just one class, see how it is. <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be one class. Here we are. I knew it wasn't going to be one are. class. <laughs> yeah. Uh, se about seven years later. Yeah. Yeah. So one class went. I was shitting. Two hours later. Yeah. I had one class. Twenty, 20 odd fights. Twenty. Six, 27, 26, 27, 27, 27, 27, 27, 27 professional fights. Well, 27 call, professional well, fights call, later. It depends on how people say professional. If it's like with elbows, then it's about 15 or 16 or something like that. Yeah, about that. And then without any pads or anything like that, it's when you class this technically professional fights. Mm. It's about 27 yeah. altogether. Just with modified rules. No, so it was, yeah, it was just the yeah, modified rules. It was yeah. like in Scotland you have C, B and A. Yeah. C being just a yeah. shorter time period, but no elbows or knees to the head. B, you can knee to the head but can't elbow. Yeah. A class, everything goes yeah. apart from headbutts. And, and NZ would call that modified tie. So yeah. like you can knee in the head but you can't elbow. Yeah, and then it's like a two minute round for the B class and it's a, yeah. what, one, a minute and a half round for the C class. Oh, I see. Okay. But uh, A class, three minute rounds. Yeah. So something you touched on at the beginning, you said that your mum was happy for you to go play rugby, <laughs> but then she wasn't uh, necessarily yeah. super happy for you to go and do Muay Thai or boxing, because mm. you wrote that you're gonna get your face banged up and stuff. And I think that's an interesting topic because, you know, as, as sports, when you look at the two of them, I guess it is easy to think that as, mm. as a mum, you know, you see two guys punching each other in the face, beating the snot out of each other, but then, you know, there's a lot of injuries that come from, from rugby, oh, right? 100%, it's a, well, it's a, a gentleman sport, the yeah. rugby, you know? It's, it's, again, I think it's more to do with what's socially acceptable and where you're from. Here, yeah. Thai boxing doesn't seem like a, that much of a problem, but then if you have to show them massive 200 kilo guys running into one another, they'd be a bit like, oh dear, what's, what's going on there, you know? Yeah. I think they would be a bit less, a bit more hesitant to doing that than they are for Thai boxing, you know? It's just, right. it's, what's, it's what's the norm here, you know? I can Whereas, imagine the Thai is saying like, jip, 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 you know, which means hurt you know? in Thai. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for those that don't know. Yeah, jip, jip. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> everything in twos, jip, jip, survive, survive. Mm. Survive, survive. Relax, relax. relax. Uh, yeah, I think, and it's also an interesting, interesting thing though, like common misconception, I guess, mm. because, you know, like we've both been fighting for, for quite a long time now. Mm -hmm. We haven't really had 
touch wood, I think any I, major yeah, injuries. I've you know? had more injuries from doing rugby than I did in Thai. Mm. Which is because someone asked me, like, you did rugby before and you did Thai boxing, what was harder? Well, depending on how you... He said what was harder you on, your, on, your, on your body. Harder, what was yeah. harder on my body? For sure, rugby was harder on my body. I'm not particularly a big guy. The guys at rugby are huge, you know? Mm. And I was, <laughs> believe it or not, I was a bit too aggressive for my own good. <laughs> and uh, so I got into some... <laughs> I'll definitely say, believe that. Let's say, let's say altercations or... I was in positions that I didn't need to be in. So I was in the back because I was smaller and I was quicker. But I would find myself up against the, the front, so you call the front and the backs. The forward and the back. Yeah, the forward and the back. I used to play rugby too. Yeah, this is the same, I had the same thing. Exactly. My mum said the same thing to yeah, me. And She's uh, like, you can play rugby, you can play you can soccer, play but like, cannot do boxing, cannot do Muay Thai. Yeah, it's, I think it's just, it's just ignorance to what the, the sport actually is. And also like we've seen, boxing's quite widely known. And it's all to the head, all to the head, all to the head. Just mm. you, you get hit to the body, but it's all trauma towards the head. And that's the main goal is to hit the head, you know? Yeah, to get the knockout, right? Exactly. And whereas Thai boxing is, the majority of the, the damage is put to the body. There's times where people get hit to the head and get elbows and they get kicked to the face and stuff like that. But the majority of what's getting, the main score is the body kick. Yeah. Body kick, you know? Yeah. So it's coming across your body. It's not so much your head. Mm. Um, of and course, isn't, that, isn't that so interesting too, right? How it's just how as a sport it's much more dispersed in terms of like yeah. the punishment and well, stuff. It's, it's, you've, got your, and you've got the entire body to work with, you know. Mm. Sorry, you've got the entire body to work with. Therefore, you it's not just isolated onto the head, you know. Mm. Where you see there's been a lot of publicised. I think it's also been a lot of publicised dramas of so when. Eubank, Eubank fought that, that kid, I can't remember his name, Eubank Jr. And the, the, he was in a coma, coma for like two months. Right. Uh, because the, it was just excessive force to the head. Yeah. Uh, Nigel Benn uh, paralyzed the man from, from knocking him out. Right. Um, so these things have been put across the, the news and stuff like that. People see that boxers, because be, boxers is a bit more widely known in the Western world instead of like, things like Thai boxing or Taekwondo or anything like yeah. that. So I think it's just, it's like most things, people that don't, something that people don't know that much about, they kind of write off, you know, they yeah. don't know that much about, say, combat sports. So it's like, it was like MMA when everyone first saw it, it's cage, cage fighting and all this, it's dirty mm. fighting. My mum said it was, when she first watched the Thai boxing fight, oh, it's just like dirty fighting. Right. Because it was, well, she watched the MMA Elbow, first. She saw an MMA first, that. someone was on the floor and you hit them, you know. Getting pummeled. Yeah, like generally, People have this sort of thing like when you box and you knock them down, you get them, you let wait for them to get yeah. back up, you know. Where she saw someone jump on someone and start punching on the floor, she yeah. was like, "Oh, what the fuck? Like, no, not this," you know. But Thai box is not like that. Thai box and you get knocked down, you need to get them to get back up, come back yeah. up, knock them back down again. And it's actually gotten a lot safer now because there has been some some fatal injuries at times. It's like any sport, there's, there's gonna be fatal injuries. Concussions happen a lot in, in mm. rugby, as you know. There's no pad in there. Yeah. And even when there is pad in like American football, concussions were even higher, Yeah. you know? I mean, because people have a false sense of security, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. And same thing with rugby as well. Yeah. And back in New Zealand, there's so many cases of people with like brain um, related issues yeah. from trauma. Like they just have, severe depression, yes. incurable depression, because they've just been hit so hard in certain areas of yeah, their brain. It's, it's, it's nothing damaged to do with them, them it's actually damage to the, to the mm. brain, you know. But in saying and that... Knee we, injuries, you know, ACLs, MCLs, meniscus. That's tears, really that's really common in neck uh, American, American yeah. uh, football, because the, the legs aren't that protected and they just dive into what yeah. they're head first, you know. Because yeah. they think they've got this helmet on. That's one, one of the reasons I don't like sparring with headgear on automatically people want to hit you harder because they think you're okay because you've got the, the padding on. Mm. It just stops you from getting cut. It doesn't yeah. stop your brain from rattling around. Yeah. Same with the helmets where they're knocking into one another. They're still running at ridiculous paces, massive guys are smashing into one another. The brain's just rattling. The brain's rattling. They're not getting cut open. They're not bashing the skin, but the brain's still moving around, you know? Mm. The whole thing about being, uh, being knocked out is when the brain rattles against the skull and you go, mm. you know, down, you know? Or sometimes when you get hit with pressure points, or like on the tip of your chin, there's all your nerve endings. Yeah. You whack that, you can go to sleep. Yeah. Temples, whack that, you can go to sleep. Yeah. Made of a lot of nerves, but also 
concussion is it's not it's concussion that's caused by the rattling of the brain. Yeah. Not so much unconscious. Because you can you can have your brain rattle and still be conscious, you know. Yeah. I've been there before. It's just vibrating too yeah, exactly. too intensely against yeah, the sides of your it's skull, just right? Trauma. Yeah. And then your brain's your body's basically saying, whatever you're doing, you have to stop. Stop. And just puts you to sleep. Even even like if you're in a car accident you get whiplash, you could have a concussion mm. because of the actual snap yeah. of the brain. Yeah. You know, doing this. So so Spencer, um, tell us a little bit about uh, what type of emotions and, uh, and just a little bit actually in general about your, your first fight, your first <laughs> ever Muay Thai fight. Uh, so, so skipping forward a little bit, uh, we got started in the gym, we've been training up for a while now. Two and months. Then, two months? <laughs> yeah. And then you just about, thrown... Maybe about two months. Okay. I knew straight away that what I was... As soon as I had that first class, I knew straight away that, that this is what I was wanting to do. I wanted to box, but then when I found Thai boxing, okay, let's go with this, you know. Um, because boxing, there's a lot, there's quite a lot of boxing gyms and where I was from, it's quite like the hard guys from the schemes and stuff like that. So that, I think that was why mom didn't want me there either. Because she knew there was some tough guys, some trouble going on. But uh, this this team was real, real solid and real good guys. But I knew as soon as I went there, I thought I want to fight as soon as possible. And I started picking up qu quite quickly as well. I'm quite good at watching something being done and then going and doing that pretty much the way it is, the same movements. A lot of people take a lot of time to get the technique of something. They don't have the coordination, whereas straight away I was, I could actually throw something. But, um, <laughs> yeah, eight weeks I said to my coach, can I fight? I asked one of the guys, do you think you can get me to fight? He's like, yeah, for sure. Have you been sparring a bit then? Yeah, I, sparring? I had one big right hand, that was all I had. Okay. I was just coming in with, against massive guys, just yeah. trying to smash them. So I was, I was tough and they all knew I was tough, so they just beat me. I was 14, 15, tiny little skinny kid. And uh, <laughs> so they thought, yeah, we'll give him a fight. But at that time, if you're below 16, you have to wear pads. So you had to have a head guard on, a body guard on, and shin pads on. And I didn't know what fucking Thai boxing was. The first, the first what, live... What did you feel going into the fight? I didn't really feel much, to be honest. It was actually, I got more nervous the more I did it. Because right. then you kind of know what's coming. Okay. The first time I didn't. You didn't really know what to expect. Yeah, exactly. I'm more nervous now than I am before my first fight. Interesting. Because well, for one, I was just ignorant to what was actually going to be happening. The first Thai boxing fight I ever watched live was the fight before me. I'm standing there at a door and seeing some poor lad getting thrown around the ring, and I went, Ah, that's oh, what I have to that's do. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm doing. I'm like, <laughs> ah, okay. And the the guy I was fighting, we were fighting. I had my first fight at 50 kilos. And now I'm fighting at 63, right now. And not you were how old? 15, 14? I was 14. I think I was 15 at this point. 15, 15, 15 okay, kilos. Cool. Um, the boy weighed in at like 57 kilos. It was a huge gap. I should never have fought him, but they were like, my coach was like, "Do you want to fight him?" Like, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm here already. I had my best friend come to see me. It was just I had one person to come to see me, and then the gym. Some. Uh, and then I could shit kicked out of me for five rounds. I just had this big right hand and you weren't allowed to hit to the head below 16. When you're below 16 years old, you can't hit to the head either. So that was my main weapon gone, you know. So I was just trying to bash this guy and he just grabbed the hold. In the body? Him. Yeah, he was just tall, you know. Tall, lanky guy, just grabbed the hold. Knee, 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 knee. He'd been training for two years. I trained for two months. And uh, I got an eight count, actually. I got an eight count on round or something like that. It's the first eight count and the last eight count I've had for a while. It was a junior fight. It was just knee me, knee me, and I, had, I was just taking all these knees, I was just not doing anything. So the, the ref was like, what's going on? One, two, three, and I'm like, I'm see, fine, what are you doing? I just didn't know how to get myself out of the situation, you know? Yeah. Big massive guy just on top of me. Just clinching away. Yeah, yeah. so I didn't yeah. know what to do. I see. The ref broke it thinking that I was hurt. One, two, three, I'm like, no, get away from me. Kept fighting again. So I lost that fight, uh, but going into it, I didn't have that much. It was more just excitement. I see. But then I got humiliated completely in front of my gym, in front of my best mate, and uh, that was when I decided that that will never happen again. You know. So you, that that really lit the fire inside oh, of you. Oh sure. We fought the weekend after that. Right. There was a fight available, literally one week, and they said, "Do you want that?" I said, "Yes." <clears throat> yes, I want it absolutely 100%. Because I remember the main thing, I went back into school the next day and everyone knew I was fighting. And I walked into the, the classroom and everyone was talking, talking, turned and looked at me. 
didn't say anything and just kind of like giggled and went back to the talk and I was like, oh, okay, okay. Oh no, no, they were like, it was like a, how did the fight go and stuff? And they knew fine well that I'd been beat, you know? So they wanted to ask me about it. I fought the weekend later, smashed boy. At this point, I, I decided, right, I'll start kicking a bit more. I was destroying the guy with leg kicks and uh, beat him up completely five rounds. I won the fight, came in the next day to, to school. Everyone talking, turned around and looked at me. Back talking, didn't give a shit. So they only cared when I lost, right? Mm. So they wanted to ask me, oh, how did you do and stuff like that? Try and stick it in a little bit, but as soon as you win, silent. No, no, no words, you know? No, one, no one's got anything to no, say. No, no one's got nothing to say. So then I was like, right, I'm going to make sure that this never fucking happens again, you know? Mm. For a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, I didn't lose for a couple of years after that, actually. Until my fourth fight. Yeah, I fought, which then got me onto the Yoko show. I fought a boy in, in Scotland on my third fight. No, fourth fight. He had 30 fights. That was my, my, my loss after that. So it was about maybe five fights before that because I had one more fight after him and a bunch. But so, so you fought that guy and, and you lost to him? Yeah, um, that was the last, that was the, the first loss after that initial loss. Yeah. But and, was, and that was the, what happened in that fight? Like what, what, what do you think it was that made you lose it? Well, he had, thir he had 30 fights. I had. So it was a quite a big experience. Yeah, I had, I had four. I was supposed to fight for the number ones. I'd already got to the number one spot in Scotland. Mm. And uh, 55 kilos this thing. So I'd grown quite a bit. And uh, I was 17, 16, 16 or 17, I was in fifth year. I think I was 17, around that. And uh, <laughs> I got a call when I was in the geography class. I got a text, my coach said, I was supposed to fight this boy for the number one spot in Scotland. I was like, oh, asshole, don't even talk about But he pulled out the week before the fight. I knew as soon as I got the text, he's gonna pull out. So they said, we've got a, a replacement. Sam Baruka, and I was like, didn't we watch him in Yorker? We went, we used to travel down to Tingland to watch the Yorker shows in Bolton. We saw this boy at 53 kilos fighting these two boys, and they were smashing one another, and I was like, they were like, that's your weight. Maybe, maybe in a couple of years, you'll get to fight them. And I went, oh yeah, yeah, a couple of years. A month later, I get a call saying. <laughs> right, it's funny how the universe works. Yeah, eh? you're fighting this guy, you know. I went, you sure about this? Yeah, I went, okay, no problem. First thing I did, as soon as I hung up, I just went on Facebook just to check, checked his name, and I went, that was one thing I shouldn't have done. <laughs> well, for me, it, it worked better. The his profile picture that he's got, I'll never forget it. He's got a belt here, 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 standing there like that. You're like, oh, going, oh shit. shit. I've got the one I got from Asda, the supermarket or something. <laughs> like that. That's about as much as I've got. Yeah. And I'm going, oh. Okay. <laughs> Went back to my geography class. <laughs> yeah. Had the picture, I was like, right, I'm fighting this guy now, and my mate's like, oh, fuck. Oh, you. God. Good luck. And, and we kicked the shit out of one another for five rounds. Okay. They weren't, ex and I was big for the weight. I'd cut quite a bit. And uh, I was even cutting weight at 16, 15, uh, 16, 17. I was big for them. He was a lot smaller than I was, but he was more technical, smarter, faster, but I, I was still keeping up with him. Bang, bang, yeah. bang, 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 kicking. This is when I could actually kick well now. Yeah. I was kicking full professionally, like properly. And uh, it was very, very close. It was actually a very controversial decision people were doing when he got the, the decision. Really? Yeah, and uh, I thought I'd won it. Then we fought, actually Brian Calder was judging it. So, uh, he's the Yoko promoter in, in the UK. I thought I'd won it. I can't remember who gave it to who. And uh, it was a majority decision. So that was like two judges gave it to him, one judge gave it to me. So if it was one judge, two judges, it's like, they just edged it to him. Mm. And uh, we fought one another a couple months later in, in Bolton, so I got the fight in Yorker. That's when I got that big opportunity to get where I am now. Mm. And had to beg my parents to let me fight because it was during the lead up to my main exams in high school. So that was a big thing, you know? Mm. And uh, cause I'm- Cause you're going against the, the flow, aren't you? Yeah, and You're I'm very bad at dyslexic, especially at that time. Right. Was, I was terrible, you know. I failed everything in my life up to that point in terms right. of academical stuff, you know. 
but so I got this opportunity and I was making sure that I got that, you know. I said to them, I said, if you let me do this, I've got six weeks after the fight, but that could be like a six week fight camp of exams. So the same amount of effort that I put into my fight camp, I'm gonna put into my exams. But I'm gonna be doing both anyway, whilst I'm fighting, you know. So they gave in, was like, right, okay, it's, it's a big show. He's, he's gotten this far already, might as well let him do it. And if I didn't and how, and how did that fight go? I lost again. I lost, I beat him. Uh, lost, lost two times to him, two in a row. But, right, um, and, and how did that feel, losing two, two fights in a row? It, it hurt, but to be honest, it, it shouldn't have hurt that. I shouldn't have been too hard on myself, but the amount of work that I put in for that fight was, even thinking about it now, is sickening the amount of work. So I had to be on a train from seven, seven o'clock, half seven in the morning, and I'm getting to school at nine o'clock every day. I did that for nine, uh, seven years. And then I'd get a train back, two trains back to get back home. I would wake up at five o'clock in the morning and go and run about four or five miles. I would then get into the house for about six o'clock, six thirty, depending on how fast I was going. I would be sprinting as well. So I was lighter so I could run quick. And uh, I'd always been quite strong at running. But um, I would then get home and cook my lunch and snacks for the day, pack it all up, go and shower, come back, seal it all together, put it in a bag, get washed, get dressed, leave. My mum would come and try and wake me up some days thinking that I was sleeping in and then realise I wasn't in my bed. Just go, where the fuck is it? Where has it gone? Mm. And come into the, the kitchen and see me standing there cooking in my running gear, you know, <laughs> cooking my eggs off or whatever yeah. it was that I was eating. And, uh, and she's like, So at that point, did you really okay. feel like you'd found your passion? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Like, I, I had this one goal that this yeah. is what I was going to do here, and there was nothing that was. I didn't. I could. I had all the excuses under the belt to, to say, oh, I can't. I can't make the way. I'm at school all day. People are eating this. People are eating that. Well, what? I made my own meals then. I studied up on nutrition. I remember getting the call. I was sitting with a packet of crisps, and <laughs> they went right 53 and a half kilos. And I went, oh shit. <laughs> I'm fight the last fight was 55 and I was right. big and it struggled to make the weight Ooh. and I was like uh, right I need to get some I need to get to work then I need to figure out how to do this properly because I can't do it the same way that I did last time it was hard yeah. to get to 55 never mind lose a kilo and a half after that mm. and I was like right drop the packet of crisps do, 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 do. but in hindsight I'd done it too much I'd done it I was too hard on myself I was too strict I was too driven eh, too driven but I was too tunnel focused, I was very tough on myself and mm. actually like developed an eating disorder because of it. Which still kinda gets me to this day. It still kind of mucks me up a little bit. Um, so it's got to I find now it's about balance. And so what happened in that fight on the York? Again show? it was the same, it was back and forth it was a war. We yeah. we smashed one another. It it he just twic it just got it by one sweep. There was a round, I think it was the fourth round. He threw a kick, I caught it, I sweeped him in the air, put him on the floor. He got up, I threw a kick, he caught me, sweeped me in the air. There was about four, two for him, two for me. And I think on the fifth round, I threw a kick and he caught it. And so I you tried just got to, one extra sweep on you. And I tried to push him off, but then I put myself on the floor. I tried to like push him and then I like fumbled and fell to oh, the no. ground. And, I remember and that's all it takes in a close fight, right? I remember right? the commentator and he was like, he put himself on the floor there, which I did. I did put myself on the floor. But that's what won on the fight. It was just, mm. it was my mistake. Not, very, not, not very, him putting yeah. me on the floor, but it was my mistake of doing that, you know? It sounds like a very close fight. It was, and it was just a, I was so skinny, so drained, but I still just, it was just sheer will, you know, will and determination. And, uh, but after it, I wasn't too, I wasn't too like, after the fight, I wasn't too upset because I knew I gave it everything I possibly could, you know? Mm. This boy, I looked at it as this boy's got 30 fights. I've got this was my fifth fight on this size of a show, mm. and uh, I said to myself, "Well, he's got 30 fights. I've got five. What does 25 fights worth of experience look like?" And I think it was the six weeks I had or eight weeks. Say six weeks. What does that amount of work look like in six weeks? Fucking lot of work, doesn't it? Right. Well, mm. let's get to work then. So we come five o'clock in the morning. Not every day. But wake up five o'clock in the morning, get up. Every day I was up cooking and everything, but I knew I 
not to completely destroy myself. So every second day or so, I'd be getting up at five o'clock with my coach sometimes, sometimes by myself, cooking everything, eating everything, getting to the to school. I had an hour lunch break. I would go to the gym at the school, train for an hour in the gym with weights and running everything back to class. Sometimes I had to eat during class because I didn't eat during lunch because mm. I was training. And you weren't supposed to do that in school, but I had to ask them, it's like, I'm training for this, I'm sorry, okay. And uh, sometimes I went to class in my PE kit because I'd trained too late and I had to then just get to class. Zip to class. Yeah, and then change after it, you know. Yeah. Get, finish school, get back home, take me another an hour and a half, two hours to get home. Sleep on the train, make sure I didn't miss my station. <laughs> and uh, get home, I'd get home for five o'clock. My training at the gym was at six o'clock till eight o'clock. So I had an hour to get some food in me, coffee. And this is when I actually started liking coffee. This is the, the habit, it was when you started mm. cutting weight, anything that tastes give, good and gives you energy. Um, I'd have like a coffee, get some food in me, and I was in the gym again. From six o'clock to eight o'clock, get home, then have to do my homework if I had any. Do the homework, which I didn't always do, because <laughs> I was asleep. And dyslexic. And dyslexic. <laughs> I just didn't do it. <laughs> and uh, I can't blame the dyslexia, I'm not doing it. Sometimes I would forget because of yeah. the dyslexia, which is my main problem. But And then I'd repeat. I'd done that for six weeks and I got to a ridiculous shape. Yeah. People, I posted a picture before when I was, I was wire thin. Mm. I looked, I looked completely malnourished, looked someone forgot about me in a cave. But um, <laughs> I was doing some push-ups during it. So we're gonna buy you yeah, it was like a mixture between the two. And uh, But after that fight, my body responded very badly. Because at the time, paleo was a big thing. And the paleo diet, no refined carbs, no breads, no cereals and stuff mm. like that. So I was like terrified of carbs. I was very much against carbs, which I was technically keto, but I was still having fruits and I would still break my diet sometimes. When I said break my diet, it was like, have a sandwich. But mm. for that to me was like the worst thing you could possibly do, you know? Mm. I remember calling my mate and <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but at the time it was a real problem. I, I like, this is when I was thinking like, maybe I had a bit of an eating disorder here because I called him and was like, I broke my diet. Ah, oh, fuck, I fucked it, I know I, I, I don't. He's like, well, what have you done, what have you done? Have you had a KFC? Did you have a pizza or something like that? I said, I had three bowls of bran flakes. And he's like, Spencer, get to sleep. Like, three bowls of bran flakes, you know? And I'm like, yeah. but it's carbs, it's carbs. I, I just, really what my body was wanting was to load back up on carbs because everything was depleted, you know? Mm. No one now actually researching furtherly and actually keeping my studies going with it. My body was yearning for that, you know? Because yeah. it was just completely... De uh, Super depleted. Yeah, depleted. And, uh, so it was actually quite a good thing that I did that. I just refueled myself. I remember lying there and sitting talking to myself. It's like, right, that's it. You're never doing this again. You're, you need to push even harder tomorrow. So it was really like self, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Put myself down a lot. Yeah. And, uh, but again, I said, I saw that as myself as that was all giving me fuel to push it forward. Mm. It was just all will. There was no. Well, it sounds like you, you learned you learned a lot from this experience. Hundred percent. That was and, the, and the Spencer, hardest thing I've ever done in my life. What would you say was your your toughest fight today? Like, if the you look back over all your fights, all the people fight. that you versed, if we're just looking at like the fight itself, mm. not necessarily like the training the camp or anything like that. Like, wh who would you say was, was your most challenging uh, opponent? Well, it'd have to be Singh Payak. Singh Payak. Singh Payak I fought okay. last year. Because he's just the, the, the toughest, the, the highest caliber fighter I've fought here. Yeah. Yeah. Ex Channel 7 champion. I'm sure he had a, a stadium title as well. Yeah. Um, and how, how did you find it fighting against someone of his level compared to like other fighters? I actually felt more comfortable in there with him than I did against less experienced fighters. And why do you I, think that is? I felt less, I felt less, Nervous, I felt well. I think well, I had nothing to lose either. I was going in against someone that's had like 300 fights and with all these accolades, and I'm just Spenny Brown, you know. Yeah, from your there's, there's nothing that can, there's I'm nothing that goes wrong, you know? Whatever happens is going to happen. If I'm going against someone that's less experienced than me, now, now the tides are turned, the tides are turned now because then I'm starting to get this recognition and people know my name and I'm doing quite well. On well, like if you look at your last fight, right, against Albert yeah. Xavier. 
that felt like there was a lot of pressure on you mm. to perform a certain even, way. Even, even though he was more experienced than I am. Right, but you had a bigger you name. Know? You, seen, I have you a had a bigger, bigger name internationally. Exactly. And in Europe as so, well. So then, if, so for, to me, then if I lose for that, I lose that fight, then that kind of gets made redundant now, you know? Like, mm. you've got all this, but then you lose, you know? You lost to this guy that yeah. doesn't have... But at the same time, it's Thai boxing, and things, things happen, so you yeah. can, I can recover from that. Yeah. It's okay, you know. We, we, there will be well, maybe be a time where I lose against someone that I shouldn't have lost to, which has happened before already. What, what would you say you learn from fighting someone of Sing Pai Ak's level? Uh, what would be like your, your lesson that you learned in that fight? It was heart. It was just all heart. Heart. All heart. Because he was, he was playing in the game that I was wanting to play as well, but he was just that bit smarter and just that millisecond quicker. Because we were both pushing at one another, and he would just let go as the time I was about to let go, and I would nudge forward slightly, and he would whip up this right kick. The right kick was scandalous, and I had a choice to make. I would say, said to myself, "Well, you're either going to take that across your your arm, across your ribs, or you can catch it and do something with it." So I thought, right, well, I'm going to catch it because then it gives me a better chance of actually throwing something back. What I didn't do was because he was smart enough, because he pulled me away, and I'd fall forward. I wasn't able to step to my right to take the the, the, the impact of the, the kick away. So I was just taking rib, uh, my shin was, uh, his shin, sorry, was rattling against my ribs all day. But I was twisting slightly so it would go across my back. And I've got quite a big back, so it was taking a lot of the, the force. Kind so of blowing the impact. Yeah, well, that was when my back has that massive red, purple the welt. welt on my back, you know? Yeah. I didn't feel anything in the entire fight. And then didn't really feel anything after the fight. It was more my bones that were hurting than anything else. The back was okay. So I was making these little incremental decisions in the moment. And he's quite a good checker too, isn't he? Yeah, so whenever I, in the first round, I threw a massive low kick and Cause, checked cause a th a th Like one of my friends has fought him before yeah. and he said that, yeah, he was really he's good at checking really low kicks. really smart, catching everything. So I rattled the low kick in and then I couldn't kick with my right leg anymore because my full <laughs> calf seized up. And I went, oh dear. And then I threw a hook and I thought I broke my collarbone in the second round. I remember, wow. I remember um, finishing the round and lifted my arm up and went, <gasps> and I dropped it down and went, oh no, I broke my arm. And I'm sitting in the corner, I'm going, right, okay, I think I broke my arm now. I was like, put ice here, put ice here. So my right leg was gone, my right arm, I'm sure it was my right arm. My right arm was gone, or maybe it was my leg, I can't remember. One of the arms were gone, my left arm, because I remember lifting my left arm and dropping it. Right leg's gone, left arm's gone. Left arm's one of my good ones. Yeah. I mean, right, Spencer, what are we going to do here now? You know, you've, mm. you've now buggered your left, your right leg, you've buggered your left arm against the ex Channel 7 champion that's wanting to take your ribs away. Yeah. You're just going to have to keep fighting them. So I just bent down my gum shield, boom, forward again. Catch his kick, throw it to the floor, try and throw up the big hooks. It would just be that smart just to block it in time. Mm. And he would try and come in because he's good with his elbows. Right. Good with his elbows and his knees. And I knew that, so I knew straight away that I would just lock in his arms and say, no, 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 you're not going to elbow me. Maybe I'm not able to elbow you either, but you're not going to elbow me. No chance. Mm. And he would knee me straight to the belly and I was still able to take all the shots. And even he, 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 he kneed me straight down the middle. And I went, mm. He went, oh, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. How's he doing that? He was shocked that you were yeah, taking. Yeah, because he was he'd knock people out with those with those knees. Yeah. He'd stop guys with those big knees, oh, and I was taking guys. every one of them. You know. Yeah. Kept trucking forward, and after the fight, I remember, I remember being more scared about my 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 instructor, my coach, than I was about the decision. I knew I'd lost the fight, but I wasn't scared about this guy. I was scared about letting him down. Manop was in my corner, and after the fight, I turned around and I'm like, I'm sorry, like. I didn't fight the way I should have, not the way we trained and stuff like that. He's like, no, 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 you've done good, you've done really good. You fought big heart, you know. If you if you had given up after you'd been taking those shots, my back was smashed to bits, everything was broken. And he's like, no, you kept coming forward. Don't don't say sorry, you've done great. And I went, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the main thing, because they don't, they don't really care. That's the main thing I found out here. They don't really care if you win or lose, it's how you fight. You know, if you lose, if you, you heart, fought right? your heart out, if you fought your heart out and left nothing in that ring, then it doesn't matter. It was the same way when I when I fought the, the boy at 53 kilos. I left everything in that ring. Then I didn't have anything more to give before the fight either. 
So when I lost, I was like, right, well, he's beat me then. He just had more experience. He's just but in, than in Thailand in particular too, the Thais, yeah. they really, really respect heart. And exactly. they put it on a pedestal too. The, that's, that's the You look thing. at all the fighters, even if they're not you know, necessarily the champions or the stadiums or whatever, they all were very it's highly small. revered. They when they're fighting, everyone goes. It's this huge spectacle yeah. to see them display their heart, really, isn't it? Yeah, well, if you look at a fighter and we're fighting at the end of the day, you know, mm. it's not tiddly wings. You're going to get an elbow across your face and then you've got to ask yourself a question, you know. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't kid yourself. You really can't lie to yourself in general. Deep down, you know what's mm. going on, you know. But in every fight, you always have to ask yourself something. When you find yourself in a situation where it's like, right, I'm either going to go down now or I'm going to stay back up and fight until like, I'm unconscious or like, unable to stand. Mm. So I've, I've had fights where I get caught with a big shot and I went, okay Spencer, what are you going to do now? Are you going to fall down? Because I could quite easily just go Ugh, to the floor, I don't want to do this anymore, and been stopped. But it was just as you're about to go, no, fuck that, bang, and you come mm. back, you know? I refuse, I refuse to, to let myself go down. Mm. You know, if, if, if I ever do just go, I don't want to do this anymore, just go to the floor, then I'll retire. Right. I said that to myself already. If I if I just if I just go down when I could have kept fighting, I'll stop fighting. Yeah. In general. And I think that's a good 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 rule to have mm. because it really shows that your heart isn't in yeah. in the game. In the if you're not right? in the game, then you're going to get hurt. Yeah. You know, severely. Yeah. And you're letting down your team. And you're letting down everyone else that's that's brought you up. And letting down my parents that give me all these opportunities to allow mm. me to fight. And I'm also letting down myself because yeah. I've put in all this work. No one else has put this work in for me. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's an individual sport. You're the only one in that ring. You might have all that team behind you, which gets you there, but then you've got to perform on the, on the day. You've got to perform in that ring. Oh, 100%. Yeah, so if you don't give yourself that, then you've just shat on everyone, you know? As, as well as yourself. So why do you just keep going, you know? So Spencer, just, just moving forward, mm -hmm. Where do you see the future of Muay Thai with uh, things like MMA and you know lots of different um, promotions and mm -hmm. things like that? I mean, we've got Muay Thai in Thailand, we've got Muay Thai internationally. H how do you see it in the grand scheme of things with MMA and boxing and all these other different fighting sport promotions? Like, w what are your views on that? It's grown hugely, you know, compared yeah. to even well since I started seven years ago when I didn't really know much about it. Um, when I first started, I actually, the first like, training video I ever watched was Sanchai with a, a, Yoko, a Yoko training video. So Yoko was the first one I had ever watched when I first started. The first fight I ever watched was Sanchai against Liam Harrison, and then it was the, the show uh, with Bokao against Jabba, I'd watched that as well. So Yoko was very big at that time as well, yeah. and we're slowly building, but it's getting huge now. So like, even bef before before I seen it, but now in comparison, we've got massive shows like like one that are bringing Thai boxing to the to like that public eye. Volskut Yorker is bringing it completely internationally as well. And I think Yorker is doing a really good job with that, aren't they? Yeah, for sure. For pure Muay Thai. For pure Muay Thai itself. Yorker was just it's, leading the way. Yeah, there's promotion wise. Promotion wise, even training gear and stuff like that. Like there's other the other, the other brands have stayed the same for the past five to 10 years, but York is completely innovating mm. in, in all areas, promotions, training gear, apparel. And everything. that's true, a lot of the other brands, they'll come out with stuff, but and it's then, just the same. And it'll just stay the same for like, yeah, but they now, might bring in a new product, uh, but then like five years later, it's still yeah, that same now, product. Now the, now the given Muay Thai shorts is like the, the smaller carbon ones, you know, that was from Yoko. So Yoko is actually, in, actually influencing the entire Muay Thai scene now. Everyone's got those shorter shorts now. Before they were the big long ones, you know. Mm. And then Yoko came out with the, the carbon ones, the, the original orange ones that Bokal yeah. had, you know. Now everyone has those. Yeah. That's because of Yoko. I would say that Yoko and Fairtex would probably be the two mm. leaders in the game. You get Fairtex now that are sponsoring like one, one exactly. a big one, you know, yeah. a big, a big, uh, a big organisation. But what the, the, their main, their main products. If you're talking about products, that's getting travelled around. It's the same. People like that traditional classic style as well. Mm. I liked Fairtex when I started out. I liked the, the lace-up gloves and stuff like that. Mm. 
but my heart's with York Cove for sure. Mm. Since I started the sport, I've been with them, mm. as in supporting them, and then I find like living in the gym with them, and training with them, and being a part of the team. Oh, for me too. I mean, just yeah. seeing how the products have evolved. It's, it's along with the brand itself. It's just been such an interesting journey to be. Yeah, a part exactly. Of. But um, as it comes to the, the public eye, I think. It's, it's, it's coming out to the Olympics. I think that'll be a huge thing. Because it's now been confirmed that it'll be in the Olympics. So my mum knows about boxing because she watched the Olympics. Mm. As well, you see the boxing is part of the Olympics. If you bring something like Thai boxing into the Olympics as well, well some people know about Taekwondo and stuff like because it's in Olympics, Judo. But I think Thai boxing has got such a culture behind it. So is Judo and all this other. I'm not saying that they're not, but it's a lot more exciting than, oh, yeah. than, than for, in my opinion. Oh, but, yeah. but even if you go to like something like 1SC yeah. and you watch the MMA, you watch the boxing, you watch whenever the it's Muay fight. Thai, it's just like... It's crazy, you know? Oh my God, and this I, is so exciting and to I watch, like MMA, right? you know? But if not much is going on and they're just lying there and just pump, punch one oh, another... Yeah, or they're just grappling on the ground for a long <sighs> time. You know, it's a bit like, oh, come on, mate. Yeah. Everyone, everyone wants to see them on the feet. Some, all the best UFC yeah. fights, all the best uh, MMA fights is when people have been smashing one another on the feet yeah. and they're standing up, you know? The ones that get like fight of the year or something. Exactly, they're all stand up fights, you I'm know? I'm sorry to all the, the Jiu Jitsu fans exactly. out there. Like, I do, but I do appreciate like a, a good submission and of stuff. Course. Like that, of course, of course. Yeah, we all But do. you're not going. It's really cool. Holy shit, look at that. Yeah, rear naked you, choke. Did man. you see how he defended the rear naked choke? Yeah, like. And then like, like oh, did something nice, else, you know, like. It's like when someone gets a shin across the face, you're like, oh dear. Well, they get a shin across the face and they come back and, and they, they keep get a knockout. Out. Exactly. You're like, oh my god. Like Dana White put it, put it best, like if you see someone yeah. over there playing golf, you see someone there playing football, but you see two guys fighting over there, yeah. everyone's going to turn and watch Just the two running, people fight. Yeah. And it's something primal within us, Yeah, right? exactly. It's already in, within it's, our DNA, you know? It's like this animalistic uh, instinct. We're all drawn to it, you know? If, whether or not you want, to, you want to believe it or not, or you want to accept that, it's true though. That's why you can't look away when something that you, you know you shouldn't really enjoy watching. Mm. If it's something violent or you're... you're you keep looking at it, you know, it's like you, you, you're intrigued by it all. Mm. I'm intrigued by the psychology of it all. But, yeah, yeah, it's super but, interesting, isn't but it? Once it, once the it, whole fight or flight response. Yeah, exactly. And, and Again, you have, to, you have to tell yourself, am I going to run, i.e. go down, or am I going to get my ass back up and you're going to fight? Mm. And then you find something else about yourself, you know, right. that you didn't know before. And you can't really truly know unless you find yourself in a situation like that. Something similar, if like you can do some extreme sports, why the f why are you doing this? You know, I, I I tell myself that every time. Before that last fight as well, why the fuck are you doing this, Spencer? Why can't you just have a normal life like everyone else? Why do you have to go and get punched in the face in front of all these people and and put your body in line, put your head in line? And that that makes me want to ask you, Spencer. What is it that motivates you through the tough times? <laughs> I keep asking myself that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what is it that motivates you through those tough times, man? Like when you're down, when you're in those grueling camps or right before you're about to go the, fight, you just cut all this weight. What is it that, that gives you that fire to keep going? I was, having a th I was trying to think about that a couple of days ago. Because I sit and I, break, I try and think of a topic and I break it down in my head for some complex idea. I'm in my head quite a lot, but I was thinking to myself, I've never really asked myself, like, why, why are you doing this, you know? I think, I think it comes to like when I was younger and I couldn't read a page of, never mind a page in a book, I couldn't read a line in a book, right? And my dad's quite a, a, a real smart guy, masters in physics and everything, mm. but I couldn't read a page in a, a line in a book. And then I found something that I was actually half decent at. I've, I've always been good with my body. I remember watching the Rocky movie, it was like, if you can't use your brain, use your body. And I was like, aha. <laughs> was like, Eureka! I've got it, you know? Yeah. But I realized eventually that I did have a brain when I put the same amount of work and I started using stoicism and philosophy, which I didn't know what the time was. And I started getting A's from actual exams and stuff like that. And it was like a Eureka moment there, which I then translated into life and to fight. But so when you say you started aligning yeah, it all, it all, it all, but it all came together through this sport. Mm. I wouldn't have done the same, I wouldn't have done nearly as well at my studies as I did if I didn't have the tie box and if I didn't have that outlet. 
I was a very angry, aggressive kid as a and I think this is something that a lot of a lot of young men can probably relate to. Yeah, for in sure. In terms of just like fight sports, boxing, Muay Thai, and if you don't MMA. have that ability to vent, you know. Right. They have all this like hormones and testosterone. You find yourself in some trouble, you know. All kinds of stuff building up inside of you, right? Mm -hmm. And you just you really need that outlet. Yeah. And I think that's also something that a lot of parents fail to recognise yes. inside their kids, right? And it's almost it's also discouraged now. Yeah. In today's society, it's discouraged that men mm. aren't allowed to do that. Right. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't give in to those emotions. You should. Well, you shouldn't give in to those emotions. You should have an ability to let them out mm. appropriately. You know, in the right, in the right, in outlet. the right environment. Yeah, the right environment. Exactly. You've been able to let that Through out and right accept outlet. that you've got that there. There's something that needs to be done. You know. Yeah. So everyone has urges. So that means that no one should ever have sex because they, they'll have urge, but I shouldn't do it, you know? <laughs> then we'd all be fucked, you know? Yeah. Plus, it's fun to do. Yeah. And for us, hitting something is quite fun to do. Yeah. You know, it's genetic, it's in built with us. And there's some women that like to punch things as well, and yeah. they do it better than guys do right. <laughs> half the time, you know? <laughs> they're, they're wild. Yeah. But when it comes to... That's a whole other topic. That's a whole other topic it? we could go into that. Woman, woman sport is just skyrocketing especially, at the moment, isn't especially, it? especially. Martial arts. I, I saw it when I was in Scotland. The women's fights were more entertaining than the guys' fights. The guys' right. fights are like, oh, oh, oh. The yeah. women are like that. Pull my hair back. Come <laughs> and they're going for it, you know? They're yeah. like, oh dear, I don't want to be... Yeah, they hold my handbag. Yeah, I got this. Exactly. <laughs> and I say, hold my beer. I'm like, okay, honey. <laughs> and you go. Yeah. You, know? you go, girl. Oh, you go. I'll yeah, sit yeah. with my daiquiri, no problem. Watch yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> Fuck that. I'll sit with daiquiri. Yeah. We no take problem. care of business. But, um, yeah, the, I was a very angry little guy. And... And a wee Scotsman. Yeah. And I got myself into some trouble that I shouldn't have gotten into. I was never in any serious trouble in terms of like with the law, with the police, but I got myself into altercations and fights that I, I never got my, I never put myself in them, but I could also have got myself out of them, you know. Mm. There's maybe a few times I got myself into them. <laughs> yeah. But if I didn't have this outlet, I don't want to even think to, as to where I would be right now. The people that I was hanging around with in primary school, yeah, three of them are in jail now. Two, two, two are in jail or in and out of jail. One's still in jail, 100%. For crimes, for, for assault, for carrying weapons. And then I went to high school. And that's the thing though, Spencer, when that energy doesn't have an outlet, exactly. it finds its way out in Through toxic other areas, ways. Exactly. Yeah. And, and often they're not you know, politically correct. Exactly. And or where I was, where I was positive from, towards society. My, my, where I live is like a nice little, little cul-de-sac. But just, you go one, 10 minutes down the road, 10 minutes down the road, it can get quite dodgy quite quick. Mm. And you're in that environment, you're always, and things happen, fights happen. You get people that you don't know what they have on them and stuff like that. Mm. It's also competency. If you're able to take care of yourself, if you can actually defend yourself against someone if you need to, then you, you, you're, able, you're actually able to face day-to-day -day life with a different outlook and actually being able to, to go forward. Mm. If you're someone that's just incompetent and can't take care of themselves, then if something harsh comes towards them, you don't know screwed. how to react, right? They're screwed, you know? And that happened when I was up in Glasgow and one boy got in an altercation, didn't know what to do, and got a, had a glass bottle in his hand and put it across right. the guy's face, right. right? I would have never have done that because I yeah. knew how to, which actually, I never did that because the boy came towards me first, and because I was able to, I was I was the competent one. People looked to me to take care of them. They shouted, "This guy screamed." He was on drugs, and he was so. When I was in high school, I was at a, a, a private school, mm. which is you have to pay for, and it's not cheap. And it's, there's some people that have got some a lot of money and stuff like that, which means that they can actually afford the tough stuff as well, as in they can afford the, the expensive drugs, the scary drugs, mm. the pills. Yeah. You know, the, the, the pills, the, the ice, powders, sort of the stuff, yeah. Yeah, everything, Correct. you name it, you know. Cool. And they mix that in with alcohol as well. And there was this boy who was in the street jumping about, saying he's going to kill people, he's going to batter pe beat people up. And we were all drunk, we're thinking, this is quite fun. And then he said to someone, he's looking for this one guy. And he, someone shouted, no, you won't, we've got Spencer. And I turned around and went, what? And he went, who's Spencer? And I went, oh, shit. Don't rope me into this. Yeah, straight away, like, he was over here and I turned around and went, yeah. fuck, he's just, I've reacted to that name. He's turned, he's looked at me. So he's jumped towards me. I've knocked him onto the ground. We both fell, I hit him and knocked him to the ground. I got up, bang, fuck this, I'm going. Went back to the house, jumps on someone else. I was like, 
you put that in yourself, boys, you know, I'm done. I'm walking and all I hear is back off, back off, and I turn, bink. Got a cut from here to here, you know. Really? And I sliced his face up. Oh, okay. And I've seen stuff like that happen before, and I've had wrenches pulled out on me. And mm. I brought a couple of guys from Glasgow over to, to Irvin one day. <laughs> And I, there was an altercation and I said to them, don't say a thing. One of them said something, 15 guys turn up, pull out. One of them pulled out a wrench, someone pulled out like a jack, not a jackhammer, something that you could, like, to take a wheel off a car, you know. I went, what the fuck have you got that for? Mm. They had never seen anything like that, so they were shocked. And I hadn't even seen anything before, but I knew how to talk my way out, but quite a good way of speaking. But I knew if shit hit the fan, I can go you for it if need be. Yeah, yeah, but it's different if someone's got a knife on them or someone's got a weapon that they can club across your head. Yeah. As soon as you're unconscious, you don't know what they're going to do to you. Exactly, you know? it's scary. That, but I think knowing, at that point, you, I think knowing, off, you but know? knowing what you're capable of, right? Exactly. If you are in certain situations. Which then stops me from doing it. Yeah. Because I know I can really muck that person up. Yeah. And I know that I'm scared of what I might do to that person. It's a powerful thing. Exactly. A powerful so, piece of knowledge to have. Exactly. I'm actually, I'm actually yourself. scared to, to, to severely hurt someone, not prove that I'm a tough guy. Yeah. You don't need to prove you're a tough guy if you know yeah. you are already, you know? Yeah. So I don't have that, that ego problem where I'm, you see guys that, that go about beating people up when they're drunk mm. because they think they're trying, to re, they're trying to justify that to themselves that they're a tough guy. Yeah. I, don't, I don't need to do that because I know I can mess you up. Yeah. No problem. It's more you're worried about their safety. I'm, I'm worried about, well, I don't want to go to jail. Or criminal charges exactly. on Exactly, I don't want to go right. to jail. Yeah. But I also don't want to kill this person. Exactly. You know, yeah. I know how to put an elbow across your face and I'll keep doing it. And then you just get dropped to the ground, hit your head. But all, exactly. You know, and, get and some also, type of serious injury. And also, I don't, I know myself that there's a, there's a switch. And it's happened a couple of times when I was in some street fights that I wasn't in control of myself. Mm. And I never want to be like that again. If yeah. I lose that control, I don't know what might happen, you know? Especially in a street fight when everything's going on, you don't see what's going on. You hit someone, they're on the floor and you keep hitting them. You've concrete, let's yeah. the head over them, someone dies, you've just killed someone. And now you're in jail. Now you're in jail. For something that you could have prevented Avoided. if you if you just stopped your ego from overtaking yourself. Mm. That's why I get annoyed that it's the same with drugs. I never I never touched any drugs when I was a kid. Or even now, because I know what I'll be like with them. I've got a bad relationship with bloody coffee, never mind cocaine, <laughs> you know? That's why I always say I've got yeah. uh, look what I'm like with coffee and imagine what I was like with cocaine, you know? Yeah. No chance. So Spencer, one thing I wanted to ask you, um, just just moving on. Uh -huh. Um what what would be an average fight camp for you like? What would be an average fight camp? You know, let's say we're four weeks out from a fight. Lots of coffee, no cocaine. <laughs> Lots of coffee. <laughs> no, no cocaine. No cocaine. <laughs> no cocaine. <laughs> but um, what would it be like? You're four weeks out. You four know, weeks out. Now, let's just say, let's face it, here in Thailand. Right, so you know, here in Thailand is a, it's a completely different story than of course. back home. Yeah. Average fight camp back home is about eight weeks. Eight to six weeks. Average fight camp here is about three, three to four weeks. So it's kind of like yes. streamlined in a way, isn't it? Here, the volume is much higher because okay. you just have more time. You're, you're doing it all day, every day. So you've got three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon. So if I wake up, you're generally out running for seven o'clock in the morning. If it's a big, big fight, seven o'clock in the morning, running from anywhere between eight to 10K, about five miles, five to six miles. Get back to the gym, skip, heavy bag, pads, Heavy bag again, some light weights. Pads about three to five rounds of four minute rounds. Out here you do four minute rounds. Yeah. Heavy bag, same four minute rounds. Do about five rounds of those in the morning. Then about 200 knees in the bag, depending on how hard you went. Because you've got another session to go as well. Mm. In the morning's a bit more chilled out, a bit more technique based. Mm. Afternoon, you horse it, you know. Yeah. Runs a little shorter because it's hotter during the day. So, it's, but when we had a big fight, it was three miles we'd done in the afternoon. So we we're running quite a lot. Right. Some days it's just normally. Normally I keep it to two miles. Okay. But say I went to three miles, get back, it generally straight into the pads because we're doing yeah. like six, seven, eight rounds of pads. So literally run, come back, wrap up, straight onto pads. Up, pads. Normally we, I would skip again. I would skip for maybe ten to fifteen minutes. Um, 
and then but generally sometimes it's just like let's go okay yeah. wrap up stretch off a bit get your legs a bit moving throw a couple of kicks warm up eight rounds on the pads on the pads after that's done then you've got clinching so you've, just, you've got an hour or so of, of pads and then you're clinching for about half an hour to an hour which is tough as well after that you jump on the bag you do your knees in the bag or you kick the bag about if you've not already done so knees in the bag about two to three hundred again and that's monday to saturday monday to saturday lightweights after that as well set ups press ups all sorts monday to saturday all week so just super high volume huge amounts of volume that's the main thing that's tough and for me to to adapt to is just the sheer volume of what's going on and building up Woo! monsoon season in uh bkk Doc. yeah from top my leo so Building up to the fight, mm. when does the intensity start to kind of taper off a little bit? <laughs> not really. There's not really any taper, to be honest. In Thailand, it's, if anything, it gets it gets more intense the closer to the fight. Right. It's so not, when you're on the week of the way. It's not ideal for for me. Yeah. Or for anyone. Or from like a sports science. Point yeah, of view. for anyone in my opinion. But mm. it works for the Thais, but not for for me. But you your taper is your weight cut. Mm. So when you <laughs> maybe about three days before the weigh-in. So say the weigh-in's on Friday, Wednesday is when you start to taper. <laughs> but I, my, myself, I make myself taper a bit earlier than that. I'll go a bit lighter on the run, or I'll go a bit harder on the run, but then just leave a little more in the tank when I'm hitting the pads or when I'm hitting the bag or something like that, and just try and pull back slightly, you know? Um, which, the more I've been here now, the more room I've been able to work with that, you know? I've been able to say to them, I'm going to take a step back. My body's not the same as yours. You've been doing it since you were eight years old. I've been doing it since I was 15. Yeah. I, I can't cope with this amount of volume the same way you can. Yeah. This amount of running, you know. So there's ways that I need to kind of twist my body into, you know. And I've done it as closely as I could with them. Yeah. And it's and I feel like it's been because tough, you, you, you've had time. so many fights. I mean, you had about nine fights in one year. Yeah, I've done that. That one. first that, year you were here. about six months. And that really, really like earned you some serious respect with the tides. Yeah, the knockout. After a, after a, that gave you a bit more kind of leeway, right? In terms after of what I you fought, can do. I fought. We fought in. We fought in Hong Kong. That was when I got the, the turning point for the respect value. Was I'd already spent a year in the gym, day in day out training, and they were always really hard on me. I think they were always expecting you just to go, just to leave. And even Yorkers told me this, like, they were just expecting me to just go, you know? I can't do this anymore, you know? Mm. But they put me through everything. That's what it's saying to me. You've, they've put him through everything we could possibly could, and he kept coming back. He was out the other side, hello, I'm still here. I was still like, hello, I'm here. You want to throw me around in the clinch? I get myself back up, hello, I'm here. Keep going. Spencer, sorry, mm. just, just to um, start to wrap things up, because mm. we've got a little bit of time mm. left. Um, tell us a little bit about your next fight. What's 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 happening there? And um, uh, next fight's Yoko thirty no forty one forty one forty one forty two. And who are you fighting? An island. Uh, I'm fighting. I can't remember his name. <laughs> he's irrelevant. He's a beast. Yeah, well, but I can't remember his name. He's irrelevant. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I can't remember his name. Uh, I need to look it up. Is he, is he an Italian? No, he's Irish. Irish. He looks Italian. It's oh, weird. Okay. He's, Interesting. He's he's a tanned Irishman, which I've never seen before. Okay. It's tanned. You might yeah. have some mix between them, but yeah. Most most Irish guys are like Scottish guys. We're more like a, a pale blue than anything else. Yeah. It takes us one week to get white. But um. And what date's that? July what? Twenty seventh. July twenty seventh. A couple of days after my twenty second birthday, so I'll be twenty. I'll be twenty two on the twenty fourth, and then I fight on the twenty seventh. So I get my birthday cake after that. Nice. So I've got about two months. And we're just going to keep it training for that now. Awesome, bro. Yeah, so it'll be good fun. Find Spencer, me, me sing down I've got to well. catch you off there. I'm sorry, man. No problems. <laughs> We've got a minute left, so <laughs> thank you so much for coming no on the problem. show today, bro. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. My man. Oh, man. So awesome stuff, dude. Yeah, sick, man.